Name's uh, Mitchell Lamb. I'm a lieutenant here with the Haines City Fire Department. I've uh, been working here 11 years, uh, three years as a lieutenant. What made you decide to get into the fire service in the first place? My dad. So my dad did 25 years with OFD, and he gave me two options. It was either the fire service or the military, and I wanted to follow in his footsteps and start a tradition, hopefully continuing the family. So I chose the fire service. What would you say is the most challenging aspect of your job? The most challenging is trying to manage all the different personalities that come along with a crew. We are a small crew, at least on this shift compared to other shifts, but trying to be able to have those interpersonal relations, those personal relationships with all the different personalities and trying to make sure everyone is meshing and, and vibing throughout the shift. The purpose of today's training is to test one of our new engineers. Um, he posed the question of how many lines we can flow off one truck at one time. So what we did is we set up a courtyard lay on a three inch to a gated Y and then had two inch and three quarter hoses going off of that as well as flowing our uh, deck gun. So we have come to the conclusion we can do all that and then flow two additional lines if needed. We do training um, 16 hours a month. So in each time we work, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, Monday through Friday, we try to come out here, do two hours of training a day. We try not to train too much on the weekends, kind of use that as a time to relax from everything that we've done during the week. If we don't get our two hours in that week, we will pick it up on the weekend. So what you see over there, you see the guys, they're back flushing the master intake valve. This is what we use to supply the truck from the hydrant. So we use large diameter hose. We connect it to here, open that. And now you got water to your truck from a static source. We came in this morning and there was a constant leak. There was a constant dripping going on. So we've you know, been around long enough to where we know what that is, is it's like hard water calcium buildup. You might have a faucet at home that's leaking or whatnot, same thing. Calcium buildup, hard water, all the components inside of this thing. So that's what they're doing. They're back flushing, which is hooking the hydrant up into different ports, discharges, intakes, whatever. And you're basically shooting water out instead of taking water in, you're blowing it out. And hopefully that knocks all the calcium and hard water buildup, whatever gunk, dirt, debris is built up in there, hopefully we'll get shot out. So we got a, a meal for one, with pepper jack cheese, crusted chicken, a couple salads, a yogurt parfait for my sweet tooth, and then trying to figure out meal number two. Oh, we do Publix runs probably once a shift uh, in case everyone needs to get lunch or dinner, snacks, um, especially when we do shift dinners, which we do once or twice a week, depending on um, if everyone's there or not. It's out of pocket. I pay with my own money. I do not have a food stipend. The city does not give us any kind of food stipends. Everything that I buy at Publix is with my own money, yes. Uh, our typical shift is normally 24 hours, so I got in at 8 a.m. this morning. I'll work till 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, 
We can also work 48 hours straight, and then in times of uh, state of emergency, so hurricanes and things like that, um, there is no time on when we can leave. We can stay here up to five days straight. Uh, depends on when the state of emergency is ended. That is basically why we always go, because we don't know when we can eat for one due to calls and things like that. Also, we need to have food throughout the day, so we have our strength and energy up to run all the calls that we need to run. That's one of the best questions I've had in a long time. It's very hard to be able to balance being a team member as well as a leader. I grew up, you know, leading by example. So, you know, there's a few days I'll get in there, get my hands dirty, still, you know, work on my skills that I need to work on as if I was, you know, riding backwards um, because it's very important to know how to still do the basics and, you know, what firefighters do every day compared to what an engineer does, compared to what a lieutenant does and, and things like that. Um, but it also comes with confidence and being able to, you know, delegate who needs to do what and who, who's capable of doing certain things. My approach to training and mentoring uh, new firefighters, probies, probationary, you know, firefighters would be to lead by example and to teach all my mistakes I made when I was new to the fire service. You know, I'm a big component of constructive criticism and learning from mistakes as long as no one is getting you know, obviously just was hurt because of it and things like that. But I, I like to pause. Yes. Sorry for the interruption, guys. Uh, we got a call mid mid interview, so basically it came in as an unconscious patient, and then while responding to the call, um, it escalated quickly. The notes were coming in, stated not conscious, not breathing, unknown if pulse. So it escalated to being a cardiac arrest. So got on scene, verified he was unconscious, pulseless, and then uh, called a code nine nine, which means CPR in progress, to let everyone know that is coming on scene that we are working a code. We'll turn the truck on and there's the battery and then see if it closes. See if we fixed her. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I hope so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you do it. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah. It. Is it battery on? It's off. Well, we have a leak from a valve. Uh, four inch discharge, and we're trying to get to the bottom of it. The truck was back flush today, and a lot of sediment was moved around and could have possibly stopped up from this valve being able to shut completely. Now we're trying to find the solution for this. You know, we don't want to be that person in the department or that person anywhere at any job, it doesn't have to be in the fire service, that only comes with problems without having a solution. So, we have this problem we're you know spitballing ideas throwing ideas back and forth to try to fix that problem we're doing everything we know to fix the problem if we get it fixed that's amazing if we don't well at least we tried and didn't just pass the buck or pass the blame on to someone else you know it's accountability
get a coffee, please? Two sugars? Like three? <laughs> Mike. I didn't get you coffee the first time I worked here. I'm a movie star now. I have needs.